Hey guys, and welcome to another Stardew Valley Tips video. In this quick tips video, I'll be giving you tons of tips on how to get deeper in the Skull Cavern, how to get tons of prismatic shards, easy, and tons of information about the Skull Cavern. For this video, it'll have two sections. The first one will be called the prep, then the mines. The prep will prepare you, and the mine section will tell you the best way to get through the Skull Cavern and tips inside the cavern itself. The first tip is pretty obvious. It's bombs. You can buy mega bombs from the dwarf, to unlock the dwarf, you need to gather all the dwarf scrolls, the dwarf helmet, and the dwarf gadget. And you also have to upgrade your pickaxe to mine the big rock in the way. After you donate all those items to the museum, you'll be able to communicate with the dwarf because you'll know how to speak his language. Now that you have your bombs ready, the next tip I would say is get tons of food. A decent amount where you know you can eat like 50 in a trip and you'll still be fine and have food left over. The reason you need so much food isn't because of the monsters, but because bombs deal damage to you when you blow them up. And if you're thinking just to avoid the bombs, yes this is possible, but it takes way too much time, and time is everything in the Skull Cavern, so have tons of food. Now that you got your pickaxe, food, and tools ready, what else? Specifically food with speed and luck, and drinks with luck or speed. Your character can drink and eat something, and the effects will double. So if you have a coffee that gives you plus one speed, and a food that gives you plus one speed, you'll have plus two speed now. However, this doesn't work with food. You can't just eat a bunch of different food and the stats will not stack. Some of the easier food that you can get that has luck and speed is spicy eel and espressos and coffee. If you head to the desert trader, you can get spicy eel for one ruby and get espresso for one diamond. Spicy eel gives you plus one speed and plus one luck, and espresso gives you plus one speed. The spicy eel lasts for seven minutes, and the espresso lasts for four minutes and twelve seconds. There's also coffee, but coffee only lasts for 30 seconds, so espresso is a lot better. You really only need two spicy eels and three espressos for one skull cavern trip, so you really only need like three diamonds and two rubies, which at this late game, it's really not that hard to get. But if you're like me and you like having speed and luck all the time, this is where the crystallanium comes into play. These guys duplicate minerals. You can put any kind of mineral like diamonds and rubies in there, and they'll duplicate your minerals every three to five days depending what mineral you use. You get the recipe for the crystallanium once you get to level nine in mining. They're a little expensive to make, but you really only need a few. It takes 99 stone, five gold bars, two iridium bars, and one battery pack to make one crystallanium. But since I have a bunch of resources and I'm really far into the game, I decided to make a whole farm of these so that I can have spicy eel and espressos all the time so I can just have speed two and one luck literally all of the time. It makes things so much quicker. But if you don't have any of these foods and you can't get them for some reason, look through all your foods that you have and see what kind of bonuses they can give you. You definitely don't need to eat spicy eel or the espresso or even eat food at all that'll give you bonuses, but it really does help. But you do gotta make sure that you have food that you can eat so it can heal you. Speaking of luck, look at your TV and go to the fortune teller. It'll tell you if you're having a good or a bad day. Going on good luck days will help you find more staircases and holes and other things that'll help you in the skull cavern. Now for my next tip, this is a personal preference, but in my opinion, if you have the Galaxy Sword already, go buy the Galaxy Hammer. Once you unlock the Galaxy Sword, go to the Adventures Guild and you can buy the Galaxy Hammer. Now here's why I think the hammer is better than the sword. There's a little trick you can do with the hammer you can't do with the sword. We all know about the sword and the hammer's abilities. Sword being able to block and the hammer doing a power slam attack. You can tell the normal hammer ability hits monsters twice by the little particle effects and the noise if you hear it closely. But did you know when you slam your hammer down, if you spam the normal attack button, it'll spam attacks. As you can see, when I use the hammer's ability this time, I actually attack six or seven times. You can tell because of how many of the particles came up and if you listen closely, or you can just tell from how quick I'm killing these monsters. For example, in this clip you can see what the normal ability looks like and you can tell that it only attacks the monster twice. But with the trick I just told you, you can tell that I deal a lot more damage and that I attack more. The new update did make the hammer's ability not regenerate as quickly, so if you still prefer the sword, it's really all preference. But now that you can upgrade weapons, you can upgrade the hammer to swing quicker, and you can also upgrade it so the ability will come back quicker. For the next tip, we have the warp totems. These teleport you to a certain part of the map. For the warp desert totem, you can buy these from the desert trader, or buy the recipe from him and just craft them. It takes two hardwood, one coconut, and four iridium ore. 
for the warp farm totem, you can get the recipe from getting level 8 in foraging, and it costs 1 hardwood, 1 honey, and 20 fiber. With these, you can save a bunch of time. As soon as you wake up, you can instantly teleport to the desert, and you can basically stay out till 1.20 a.m. and just use the totem to get back to the home and just run right to the bed. Now, the last tip before I get into the stuff you should know about the Skull Cavern itself. Stairs. Stairs can be very useful, but are expensive. It costs 99 stone to craft these, and you unlock the recipe to be able to craft stairs at mining level 2. But, there's hope. You can also get these from the Desert Trader on Sunday. It costs 1 jade per staircase. So what I like to do is I do exactly what I do with the spicy eel and espresso. I use the crystallaniums and I just put a bunch of jades in there. And then I just duplicate the jades so I can go to the desert trader, get a bunch of spicy eels, a bunch of espressos, and a bunch of stairs. Now for the tips for actually being in the mines. First, as simple as this tip is, it's very useful. Set your hotbar the way you're comfortable. Have your food and bombs close by, your pickaxe and weapon next to those items, and just make it organized to make things easier. First, the thing you want to pay attention to most is your health and monsters. There's also specific floors that I personally skip that are very time consuming, but your main objective is to get in and put a few bombs down in the areas with tons of rocks and eat. If anything, try to avoid the monsters. They aren't worth your time. Obviously, if they're attacking you, you want to kill them, but if possible, just try to avoid them. Your goal is to get to level 40 or 60 in the Skull Cavern. Don't bother grabbing anything in the levels before that. As much as you want to, maybe if you find one a little iridium rock, or maybe you find a diamond down there. It's not worth your time. Your main objective is to get lower as quick as possible. The reason this is, is because iridium spawns a lot more on deeper levels. So, if you get to just like level 40 and then start mining iridium, you're more than likely going to get more iridium. When you're using your bombs to get down to level 40 or 50, Put two or three down in separate areas. Don't just trust that one bomb to luckily find a ladder. It's not worth it. If you can save a few seconds, if you put an extra one or two down, if the first bomb doesn't find anything, you don't want to sit there for another five seconds for that one bomb to go off and have to put another bomb down when you could have just put one down with the first one. Now you're finally at level 50. This is where you want to start blowing up iridium. Find clumps of it if possible and blow it up. Grab the ore and get to a ladder quick. You want to be as quick and as efficient as possible. So if you see one little iridium ore in the corner, don't waste your time by getting it. Just keep on going and try to find more clumps of iridium ore. Each iridium ore also has a 4% chance of dropping a prismatic shard. So this is a really easy and efficient way of getting a lot of prismatic shards. I've gotten 15 prismatic shards in one skull cavern run before. You just gotta be quick and efficient. Another thing you wanna keep an eye on is making sure that your buffs stay active. Make sure that your spicy eel or your espresso is always active so that you're quick and you have luck. But most importantly, keep an eye on your health and play it safe. Also, when you blow up rocks, there's a chance that there will be a hole rather than a ladder. Jump in those, you can drop floors in those. I've actually dropped 13 levels from a hole before. Now we're coming to the end of the video. Now I hope all these tips helped at least one of you. With all these tips combined, I'm hoping you get that prismatic shard you wanted or that ore you needed. I really hope you guys enjoyed the recent content, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.